convergence. In Cartesian coordinates, it's just d by dx of dx plus d by dy of dy plus d by dz of dz. But now if I want to do it in spherical coordinates, it's going to take a different form. And so what I want to do is take a little volume, the same way I did um, for this case, a little volume, but I will make my uh, volume, um, the size of it, be parallel to the coordinate axes. So in spherical coordinates, if this is the origin, and then I imagine extending out uh, radial lines like this. And then I take um, a little volume over here, so this will be my dv. And I can compute um, the outward flux in the radial direction, the outward flux through the faces that are perpendicular to the latitudinal direction, and same thing in the longitudinal directions. So before I do that calculation, it's useful to remind ourselves what are the area of all these little patches. So if I take the, the bottom patch here, that's perpendicular to the radial direction, so perpendicular to r hat, the bottom patch, its area will be, well, this side here, this is d phi, and that's, so that's r d phi, the length of this side, and the length of this side is going to be r cos phi d lambda. And so the area will be r squared cos phi d phi d lambda. And then at the top face, right, perpendicular to the r hat, well then r will be a little bit bigger because this length here is dr. So this will be r plus dr squared cos phi d phi d lambda. And now if I take the area of the faces, so this is the area, uh, for the face perpendicular to the phi hat vector, so on the front face, uh, the area will be r cos phi d lambda, right, this length times dr. And then on the back side, it will be r cosine of cosine of phi plus d phi, right, and increased by d phi, times uh, d lambda dr. And finally, perpendicular to the lambda hat direction, I will have the front face, its area will be r d phi dr, and on the back side will be just r d phi dr, right, they're the same. It doesn't depend on um, phi or on r. So both the, the two faces perpendicular to the lambda hat direction have the same area. All right, so then we can now uh, break our vector v into three components, uh, a component in the radial direction, a component in the phi direction, latitude, and a component in the uh, lambda or longitudinal direction. So v, we'll write it as dr, d phi, and d lambda. And now if we calculate um, the divergence, we will need to know, we'll take one over the volume element divided by the sum of the surface fluxes through the six sides of that little uh, control volume. So, oh yeah, we still need to know what's the volume of that element. So this dv, right, we've seen this already, it's r squared cosine of phi d phi d lambda dr, right, as units of volume r squared times r gives me r cubed, or length cubed. Okay, so let's start doing the calculation. So in the r hat component, so I'm going to use these as my components of v. All right, so in the, uh, for the two faces, out the top and out the bottom, we will have v of r at r plus dr, phi and lambda, times the area, and the area at the top is this one, r plus dr, all squared, times cos phi d phi d lambda, cosine of phi d phi d lambda. So that's the flow out the top, minus the flow out the bottom, minus vr of r phi and lambda, times r squared cos phi d phi d lambda. So that takes care of um, 
the top and bottom face. Now I'm going to do the front and the front and back face in the phi direction. So I have d of phi, r phi plus d phi, lambda, and then the area we use this one, r cosine of d plus d phi times d lambda times dr minus what comes out this face, which is d phi of r phi and lambda times this area r cos phi cos phi d lambda dr. And then finally, um, the two um, meridional faces or the two faces in the perpendicular to the line of constant longitude that would be d lambda times r phi lambda plus d lambda times the area, which is r d phi dr minus d lambda of r phi lambda times r d phi dr. All right, so this is the sum of the, if I add all these pieces together, that's the sum of the outward flux to my little unit volume. And if I want to get the divergence, I should divide this whole thing by 1 over the volume, which is r squared cos phi. Um, let me just write 1 over dv since I don't have enough space. dv. And if I take the limit as dv goes to 0, this will be equal to the divergence. So let's do that calculation. So what do we get? All right, so the first term over here, oh, remember that dv, I'll keep my dv, is r squared cos phi d phi d lambda dr. All right, so if I take the first term, um, in the dv, the cos phi, the d phi, and the d lambda will all cancel. So all I'll be left with are this term and this term, right, this and this, divided by dr. So the first term, of the divergence in spherical coordinates will be equal to uh, v of r at r plus dr, and I'll ignore the other coordinates, times r plus dr squared minus v of r at r times d times r, right? Squared, squared, times r squared. And Everything in the volume canceled except for the dr, right? The dr didn't cancel. So, and the r squared didn't cancel. So r squared dr. Yes, so I did not cancel. When I, I couldn't, I could have canceled it in this term, but in this one, since it's r plus dr squared, I didn't cancel. I kept the r squared in both. All right, that's the first term. Then the second term, in this time, if I compare to the volume, this time the cosine will cancel because I have a cosine of phi plus d phi, but uh, one of the r's will cancel, right? One of the r from the r squares will cancel. The d lambda and the dr will cancel. So what I'll be left with is d phi at phi plus d phi times cosine of phi plus d phi. And d lambda dr will cancel. And on the bottom, oh, minus, sorry, let me make more space. Phi of phi plus d phi cosine of phi plus d phi minus v of phi times cosine of phi. And what I'm left on the bottom is I'll be left with the r, right? One of the r will cancel with this r, but I'll be left with one, and I'll also be left with the d phi. Oh, and a cos phi r cos phi d phi. Right, I didn't cancel out the cos phi's because this one has a phi plus d phi. And then the last term will be plus d of lambda, lambda plus d lambda. And this time, the r d phi dr, the r d phi dr, this one can cancel from both terms. And I'll be left with an r cos phi, um, d lambda. So this minus d of lambda divided by r cos phi d lambda. I think that's right. Yes. Yes, correct. Yeah. And now I can uh, take the limit 
where dr, dp, and d lambda all go to zero. And what I'm left with is, for the first term, I get one over r squared, d by dr. I have one over r squared, I pull that out. And this looks just like the derivative of vr times r squared. Right, it's vr times r squared evaluated r plus dr minus vr times r squared evaluated r. So that's the first term. Maybe I can write it out further down here. This is equal to, since I need space, and I'm going to come down here. 1 over r squared d by dr of r squared vr. And then the second term will be plus, and this time I'll be left with 1 over r cos phi. And then I'll have d by d phi of cos phi times d phi. That's this term in the limit where d phi goes to 0. And then the last one will be plus 1 over r cos phi d v lambda d lambda. And so this expression down here is uh, the divergence in spherical coordinates. So this is equal to, this is div dot e in spherical coordinates. And so it's a little bit more um, complex, but um, it comes from the same definition we have. It's the outward flux per unit volume. Uh, that's the definition of divergence. And now when we have these funny spherical coordinates, we have to take into account the, the fact that the surface areas on the sides, they vary with the coordinates where we are in space. All right, so that's the